Fantastic. Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is the first of two parts of the school library staff onboarding and refresher um, sessions. And we do them every fall. So this is something we've done in the past, but we like to redo them every um, every fall as close to the beginning of the school year as possible without you know, um, uh, encroaching upon the first two busiest weeks of uh, returning back. So there is quite often a little bit of new content and a little bit of tweaking here and there from one year to the next because things change, which I'm sure would surprise no one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through uh, the first of this um, two-part session, and I'm going to show you my screen here. Oh, awkward when these things happen. Okay, overview, forgive me. Um, so welcome and introductions <laughs> are a good place to start um, on, a, on day one. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about YRL and uh, our department specifically. So where are the library de development services? Um, there are two other departments um, within YRL as well, but we're just going to focus on um, LDS today and the supports and services that we provide. Um, we're also going to talk about some of the specifics that we offer just to schools. So curriculum support um, is uh, one that we've been doing for many, many years, and we'll go into that a little bit more at length. Collection support, so actually, um, again, determining um, what uh, to add to your, your collection and um, how to go about that in, in a very general sense, at least in this session. Next session next week, as you got a very sneaky peek glimpse into what we'll be talking about. Um, again, the, the where's, how's, and, uh, and so on to get that stuff. Um, general consulting report or support. So that's generally where um, we can help not only virtually, um, but we can help in person as well when it comes to um, just overall support when it comes to uh, running your library. Um, any kind of programming support for your library, such as kits and so on, um, how we deliver materials to you in a very general sense, uh, a little bit about e-resources, um, workshops, webinars, and on-site training, which of course today would be um, one of those uh, that we're going to break down a little bit more in uh, a few slides, and then some helpful information um, for School Libraries Binder, which I, I have to um, I hope, I have to assume you're all familiar with. They were sent out last year um, as a, um, an attempt to make things just a little bit more accessible so you're not having to jump online um, when you have questions. It's one of those things that quite often is sometimes easier just to grab something right off your desk. Um, but this year we already have some updates and we're mailing those out to you this week. So I'm just going to go on to the first slide. So a little bit about us. Um, here is me over here. Here is my colleague Penelope. This was our flannel Friday. Um, last year, and this is Jessica, actually, this is the uh, manager of our department who's on leave, um, but we are headquartered in Spruce Grove. Um, as you can see, we serve a lot of Albertans, um, including over 11,000 full-time um, students. So again, there's three departments within YRL. We are part of the library development services, but there's also collection and resource management, which is managed by Josie Wilson, which um, many of you may be familiar with. She's worked with the schools on and off over the years um, in a very large capacity. And then finally, technology services, which uh, is exactly as it sounds. So that's, uh, that's us in a nutshell, breakdown by a department. And a little bit uh, more specifically about us. So again, here's Jessica, myself, Penelope, and this is our other librarian in um, LDS, Christine Hutchinson. And uh, as it says here, we do consult on a wide, wide variety of library functions, not only for our public libraries, but of course for you, for our school libraries. So the main point of contact anytime for any kind of question is always going to be this email address. And of course, you're always also welcome to phone us at any time, um, which is 780 962 2003, um, but you can always email us. And uh, Penelope and I are actually the two primary moderators for this email inbox. And if anything comes in through that, we'll see it and uh, either send it off to the, to the appropriate person within YRL to answer your question, or we'll just answer it ourselves. So, and moving on. So um, as the outline uh, touched upon, something that we offer our school libraries is curriculum support. So, um, 
back in the day, we actually used to have an incredibly large um, collection of our own, which was not open to the public, but it was open to our to our libraries. So if they ever needed um, specific material, especially pertaining to any of uh, the curriculum subject matter that's being taught in the schools, and they needed some supplement some supplementary material for um, for a class or a project, and they didn't have it in their own collection, they would contact us to um, get whatever we had in our um, in our stacks. We don't have a very big collection anymore um, because there's not a tremendous demand for it anymore because of course there's a, a lot of online and, and digital um, supports that are available. However, uh, this is still a service that, that we provide on a regular basis to many of our libraries. And if you had teachers that came to you and said, hey, we're doing a um, block um, or a project on um, wheels and pulleys or something like that, or something specific to, you know, um, something in, in science or English or whatever, whatever it happened to be. And you just didn't really feel like you had enough within your own collection to support the kids that are going to be um, talking about that subject matter. You can reach out to us with that email address that you just saw, askyrl at yrl.ab.ca and make a request. Um, you know, can you get us any books on, let's see, um, so books about themes. So as we have an example here, Bugs A to Z. So let's say you needed some on um, animals, maybe African animals. So what I do is I take those requests and actually look in Track Pack, which is Track's um, catalog that spans a good portion of the province. And uh, basically I look to see what is available and I place holds on titles, either specific titles that you've requested or just titles on that theme. And uh, once they those those uh, copies arrive here at HQ, then we actually just ship them off to you um, as soon as we get them. You get them for uh, a slightly longer period of time than you would um, if you were to just borrow them outright. So if you just visited your public library, let's say with Tasco in public and board it, you would get it for three weeks, let's say. With this, you would get it for a longer period of time. I think it's a little longer than double that. And, uh, and then you would just either return it back to us, let's say it came in the mail, you would actually have a return and um, postage um, label in the envelope itself. So you can actually return it back to us for nothing. Um, or conversely, you can uh, um, just drop it off at your local public library and it'll make its way back to us. So the other thing that is commonly requested are novel studies. So we can also look for those in track pack um, on your behalf as well and place holds on them for you. Uh, however, we do a maximum of five or less. And the only reason being is because sometimes, especially if it's um, let's say something newer, we don't want to take every copy that's available in, uh, in the pack. Um, if it's something older, sometimes it's just hard to get consistent um, numbers in large quantities. So we try to keep it to a maximum of five. And then, of course, as, as we've mentioned here, high interest books for leisure reading. So it could just be something that maybe one of your kids has requested, you know, that uh, that they really want to read. But again, it's not in your collection, but it is in Track Pack. It's in Track's collection. So if we can access it, we can put a hold on for you and send it to you as quick as we get it in. And next is collection support. So again, this is really just based on the selection, selection and uh, purchasing um, that again, we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about next week, um, as well as collection maintenance, um, which we'll talk a little bit about today, but not a whole lot. And these images are actually pictures of um, a large weed that we did in one of our school libraries last year, I think, maybe even the, last, the year before. Um, and you can tell that the uh, the kind of this is a before picture was the the shelves were full, really really full, and um, a lot of our our library um, and learning commons staff just do not have the time to do a weed, especially a, a whole library weed. So um, something that uh, that we can do, time permitting and staff permitting, uh, is we can come in and do a weed for you as well as an inventory of your collection. So this was kind of uh, during the process and after you can see where uh, we can be a little ruthless, um, but we really work on a really strict criteria and have the experience to come in and, and really um, clean up 
a collection so that you have space on the shelves to um, display books so you can make room for new material and to um, get rid of the, the stuff that's just taking up space and not really circulating. So, so anytime you needed any kind of support um, for um, what do I buy? Where do I buy it? How do I buy it? That's where we can uh, support you in a really big way. So consulting overall is something that we uh, are really excel at in this department. So again, we can do it on uh, online. So we can do virtually just like we're doing today. We can do it over the phone, in person, via email, you name it. Um, and again, we can do it, uh, do, do the consulting over a variety of different tops, topics. So collection development management. So again, where do I get the materials? How do I get the materials? How do I pay for the materials, et cetera? Um, technology and space recommendations. So um, technology is a little bit limited in, in the sense that, um, and it's a little bit different for some of our schools than, and I don't want to paint uh, the same brushstroke over all of our libraries, um, school libraries specifically, but um, we have some tech supports for some of our library, school libraries, but at, at the same time, um, I, I would say that uh, there's probably a lot more of that tech support would actually come from your school division, but there are some supports that we can we can offer. Um, sometimes, you know, you maybe want to rejig things in the, in the actual physical space a little bit. Um, we can offer recommendations when it comes to that as well. And um, when it comes to your ILS or your integrated library system, so basically the program um, that your catalog is contained within, um, whether it's Fall at Destiny, whether it's Insignia, whether it's L for You, uh, because we work on a different ILS, which is Polaris, we do have very limited um, ILS support. We'll always do our best to uh, to help you out where we can, um, but sometimes again, that's kind of where the the school division is uh, is a little bit more helpful because um, uh, they have more expertise. Or your sales rep is as sometimes a good go to as well. So. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about programming support. So um, when it comes to not only programming, but just, uh, um, you know, maybe you are wanting to create or you already have a makerspace in your library or your school, or maybe there's something um, like story time that's going on in some uh, some of your uh, um, classes with the with the younger kids, etc. We have a wide variety of kits that can support that programming and uh, that class interaction. So it's something that can enhance your library or your class classroom programming. Um, and we have something for everyone um, for pretty much every age and every demographic. And there's a couple of examples here. We have a teardown kit up here in the top left. And that's great for certainly older kids. If you have, let's say like an old TV or an old radio or a phone or something like that. And this gives, gives the kids uh, an opportunity to actually tear the thing apart, kind of learn about it and put it back together. And all the tools are provided in this kit as well as ideas and plans and so on. Um, and they can also do it in a really safe manner because there's safety, there's PPE in this as well. Um, the one on the top right is our fiber craft kit. So again, if you kids want to learn um, just about any age, really, uh, some crocheting, knitting, whatever, there's not only um, pattern books here and instruction manuals, um, but all the tools that they would need. And lastly, we're just showing an example of our mechanical puzzle kit. So as you can see, there's just about every kind of puzzle here you can imagine, um, which is great for a variety of different reasons and would appeal to um, a pretty wide age range. Certainly not maybe that, you know, really um, young children, um, but, uh, you know, kind of mid-grade and up. This is always a really fun and popular kit. We also have quite an extensive um, array of story time kits available, and those can also be borrowed as well. And how you can borrow any of these um, is through uh, email. So you would uh, let us know what kits you want, and you would email um, either one of two email addresses. So again, either that askyrl at yrl.ab.ca, or you can go direct to the source, which is kits at yrl.ab.ca. Again, that's kits 
at yrl.ab.ca. Just let them know what you want, preferably when you would like it, and then we'll get back to you once we've checked the, uh, the kit schedule and um, when we can actually book it for you and, and when we'll get it to you. There is also a Google Docs link that we have. I'm just going to go back for one second here that I forgot to add my apologies, but um, I believe I just sent it out to you. And it is um, a link that has all of the listings. Um, so basically like little Google catalogs of all of the kits that we have, all of the um, Storytime kits, the Makerspace kits, um, and then other ones as well, like... Um, uh, I'm forgetting them right now. Oh, there's an Xbox kit. There are, um... oh, do we still have the world language? <laughs> there's some world language kits, um, but they're all listed in that, um, in that Google depository. And uh, if I didn't send the link out to you today with a reminder about like today's session, for example, I can always send it out to all of you. Um, again, just let me know. And then, of course, uh, once you've actually, and again, we haven't gotten to this in great depth, we're going to talk about this next week, but how do those materials get to you? So um, it could be process-only material, for example, and what uh, that is, is if you have um, material in your collection, so let's say you just had a book fair, or you found some material um, elsewhere that you've purchased from Amazon or Chapters or wherever, um, or there's been some donations and you just either don't have the time um, to take care of as, as far as cataloging and processing goes, you can contact us and ask us to um, pick that material up and process it for you. And there's no extra charge for that. It's all part of the fees that your division, school division pays um, to be a member. And we will schedule a pickup date, come get the material, catalog it, process it. Um, and when it's ready to go back to you, then uh, we will uh, do a delivery at a later date. So that's one option. Um, sometimes we will also do uh, mail on occasion. Um, and as I mentioned, the return postage is included. So if it's just a small quantity of books, so let's say you had ordered um, 10 books, but three are currently available. They have arrived here at HQ. And uh, instead of arranging a van run, which might take weeks to get to you, we'll just drop them in the mail. And, uh, and again, if, if, if it was something, um, again, like curriculum support or something that was to be returned to us, you can use that free return postage that is included at that time. Otherwise, again, you just drop it in your um, public library's return box. Uh, if you ever wanted to schedule a pickup, please use, uh, again, this, this email, AskYRL. It's your one, one guaranteed go-to um, access point to reach us at any time. And moving on, there are some really amazing e-resources that we have to offer um, through either your own or the students, if your students have their own track library card for their public library. So again, I'm, I'm going to use Wetaskiwin as an example. If you or your students are within Wetaskiwin and you have a Wetaskiwin um, track library card, you can access any of these e-resources on the public library website. Um, and all you have to do is just log in like you would as if you were going to borrow a book from the library and you can access all of these and many, many more. Um, of the e-resources that are available to you. So um, anybody with a track library card can access these. They're free and many of them are really applicable to, to students of any age. Now, something else as a uh, means of support that we offer are workshops, training and connections. And again, this is one thing we're doing right here. So regular uh, YRL workshops um, is something that uh, we do on a regular basis throughout the year. Um, we don't do as many throughout the summer for, for obvious reasons, but um, uh, they really start to, to get busy again in the fall. So, and this is kind of one of the first actually for, um, for this fall. And um, on a much bigger uh, stream of workshops and um, sessions that would be available is our upcoming, and it's, it's an old, um, logo here. I should have replaced it with our new glorious 2023 Stronger Together 
uh, logo, but there is a conference coming up in November that I can also send you information about um, that you are all welcome to attend, of course. It's um, it's actually, uh, it's a hybrid. So there is some in-person um, workshops that are going to be taking place this year. We're finally going back to that a little bit, but there's also a virtual day. So if that's something that you're interested in, I can also send you information on that and uh, how to register and so on. And you can always check out all of the amazing um, sessions that are going to be taking place, in, including some great keynotes that we're really excited about. Um, but it's something that is not geared to any one group. It's it's ideal for our school libraries as well as our public libraries. So if you don't already subscribe to our YRL weekly newsletter, um, that's something as well I can send the um, link to to register. All of these um, uh, sessions of training or workshops, the conference, etc., are all promoted on a regular basis um, in our newsletter that comes out every Wednesday, as well as on our social media channel. We have a Facebook page that we um, tend to promote all of these items through as well. So you can always kind of keep up to date with one or, uh, or the other or both. And this is the binder that I was referring to that we uh, created and sent out last year. Um, everyone should have a copy. And it's basically, again, just a rundown of everything that I'm talking about today and will be again next week. Um, it's just a great go-to that's just readily accessible. You can grab it anytime if you had questions about any of the supports that we offer in the services. Uh, we do provide updates every year. So this is our first year that we have some updates. The really important update for this year is the collection development strategy for schools document. Um, they're going to be mailed out this week. And I highly, highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with this document because it does um, explain kind of what um, your and the school division's responsibilities are, as well as our responsibilities when it comes to that collection development um, strategy. So um, what are you choosing for your collection? How are you choosing that? Who is ultimately making the decision, et cetera? So really important that you give that a read through once that you receive it. And there's also um, a, a page that is gonna replace a page in your existing binders just because there was a typo, so we reprinted it. So, um, so there'll always be updated content for it likely every year and we'll just send out to you when it's available. And that's pretty much it for part one. And I know it went really quick and I know it kind of started off with a few hiccups, so I apologize for that, but um, definitely looking forward to seeing you next Tuesday. But in the meantime, uh, do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Um, oh, thank you Penelope for putting that in the chat. I love it. Oh. You're wonderful. All right, excellent. So yeah, please, if you're not already receiving the newsletter, uh, there is a little bit of everything for, for everybody in our, in our school and public libraries uh, included that. And again, it's kind of nice because it does have um, all of that information, including a link to register directly for any of our workshops or training or um, sessions that we recommend that are outside of YRL as well. So Yes, and there's always a fun quiz. <laughs> Everybody loves my quizzes. Sometimes I'll do a puzzle, but then they want the quizzes back. Um, and definitely check out the Stronger Together um, Hey Summit website to um, just see some of the sessions that are coming up. Uh, there's actually some YRL staff that are that are presenting as well as um, some really fabulous people um, outside of YRL that are going to be presenting um, at our conference. So if there's any way that you can attend, that's fantastic. Um, uh, full transparency, we will actually be recording, I'm sure, most of the sessions, at least we have in the past, but mind you, they were all virtual then. Um, so there's, there's a good chance that some of those, maybe all of them, I don't want to say that definitively, um, but they might be available after uh, on Hey Summit to actually view at a later date if you wanted to, at least that's how it's been done in the past. So, um, so there's really no other questions. It's so quiet out there. I hope you can all still hear me. Well, I'm going to hope that you can still see me and hear me. And really great to see you, even though I can't see you. And just nice knowing you're here and we had a really good turnout. Um, I hope you learned something today. And if not, 
Um, if anything, it just kind of like brought it to, oh, nice. Um, it just kind of brought it back to the forefront because I know this time of the year can be chaos um, for our school libraries. Um, but just remember, we're here to support you as best as we possibly can. You can reach us at any time and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. And uh, we love to help you where we can. So thank you so much for attending and have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope to see you next week on Tuesday and uh, with a start with much fewer hiccups. Thanks for your patience. All right, take care everybody.